what's up you guys today we're going to be doing a little bit of a tour of my city so yes i did look a little bit goofy there uh, this this is the marini neighborhood it's a really cool neighborhood very close to the french quarter it was originally established in the beginning of the early 19th century by bernard de marini on his family's property. Uh, this right here is Elysian Fields. It's a big avenue that runs from the north to the south of the city. It's named after the Champs Elysees of Paris. Right here, this is Washington Square Park. Um, a really cool park. We're still in the Marigny. This is Frenchman Street. Now this is the daytime, so there's not much really going on. But Frenchman Street is a cool place to come listen to some jazz, a little blues, a little rock and roll. A little bit, it's a little bit more for the locals hang out, or at least where they used to hang out. Um, but to be honest, it's becoming super touristy. As well, this really colorful building here on the left is that dog. Um, quite frankly, I'm not a huge fan of that dog because uh, they only have whole wheat buns, and I think it's a little overpriced for a hot dog. Um, now, let's see what was going on. There used to be a Brazilian restaurant in that blue place, but they went out of business. Now this place is called Brawling Connection. They have really good Creole and Southern cuisine. Um, but the only problem is sometimes they can be a little inconsistent. So you have to be careful when you go. Now this is the beginning of the French Quarter. The French Quarter is the oldest area of the city. This here is Museum. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, it just basically talks about the history of jazz and other things in New Orleans. This street right here is Esplanade Avenue. Um, this is looking back at uh, the Marigny. Now the Marigny is separated from the French Quarter. Jean-Baptiste Lemoyne de Bionfille. Um, 
the original quarter actually add a bit of a more French type look to it. Um, more Northwestern French um, and French architecture, unless you're in the South, is tends to be more white and um, more woody. Um, Google it. But the city burned down in 1788 and again in 1794 when it was under Spanish rule. So when they rebuilt the city, they rebuilt it in the style of, um, of Caribbean Creole architecture, which has a lot of Spanish influence. Now, this building here is called the Cabildo, and this church is called St. Louis Cathedral. Um, if you go to any Latin city, they always, no matter where you go, whether you go to Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic, or Capacia in Haiti, or Mexico City, Mexico, there's always a church and two government buildings. That was the structure, a church and two government buildings and a square. So basically anywhere you go in Latin America, uh, every city is going to have that basic thing. Now this white building right here, um, that looks more French. French buildings are more white. Here, this is Café du Monde. Café du Monde is world-renowned for its beignets. Uh, personally, I don't think they've tasted the same since Hurricane Katrina. They're still good, but they don't taste as good to me. But I would still check it out. Um, they also serve coffee with chicory, which is like this weird root that they add the coffee to give it like more of a flavor, I guess. Um, I never cared for it, but my grandfather liked it. Older people didn't like it. Um, younger people, we just drink it to be trendy, but quite frankly, I don't like chicory in my coffee. It has a weird licorice taste. This is me on the riverfront. Yes, yeah, sorry guys, if this is lagging, I'm trying to talk as fast as I can, but it's kind of hard. This is me walking Mississippi River, um, New Orleans, because it was on the river. It was very transient. So you had lots of pirates and um, people who were explorers and convicts. And obviously, when you have a lot of less, let me see a way to put it, less people who are more mobile, more transient type peoples, uh, that's going to open the doors to more partying, party type atmospheres, which is what New Orleans has, um, and there's a cool little artwork of Martin Luther King, um, so, yes, New Orleans is definitely a party town because for years and years it was the home of, like I said, pirates, runaways, prostitutes, explorers, the adventurers of society that people like to look down on. But um, it was just a very working class city. Don't get me wrong, there were definitely the rich, aristocratic Creoles and rich aristocratic Americans too, of course, but um, the majority of the people were working class. This is Royal Street. Royal Street's really beautiful. Um, lots of beautiful balconies and galleries. Art galleries and also galleries. Galleries are essentially the balconies that come all the way to the ground. Um, okay, sorry guys. Okay, so this is me on Bourbon Street, which is world famous for debauchery. Um, pretty much anything you want you can get here. Drugs, sex, alcohol. It 
it's all part of the experience. Um, I love bourbon. I mean, I don't go out on Bourbon Street much, but I love the idea that we have it. Some people complain. They say it stinks and it's too polluted. But, guys, it's a city. Of course, it's going to stink a little bit. And, of course, it's going to be polluted. I mean, it's a tourist trap. But it's definitely worth seeing. It's very much a party atmosphere. Now you do have to be careful of pickpockets. Uh, the city has lots of street dancers, debauchery and balconies, and the such and the like. Sí.